really just a full breakdown, you know, everything that you need to learn. Basically the A to Z. From where to start, exactly what to do, how to do it, all the systems and programs. The resources and things that were given throughout the training was just phenomenal. Alright, what's up everybody? Happy Friday. Welcome to Deal Desk episode uh, 5 with, we got RJ Bates here uh, in the lobby waiting over here. If this is your first time, welcome. To, basically the way this works is we're going to do a 30 minute interview, around 30 minutes, and RJ has agreed to make some live calls. Not every guest I bring on uh, wants to do live calls, which is completely fine because that's what I'm here for as well. But we'd like to get people interviewed and then jump on calls. And RJ has agreed to that. It's not too late to submit leads. So if you have any leads you want to submit to be called live, go over to the reitoolbox.com. Keep in mind, we only call these leads twice. Okay. After we, it rings twice, we move on to the next lead. Okay, RJ is going to uh, name the street name and the person's name. If you notice that's your lead, city, whatever, um, feel free to resubmit that lead um, because it doesn't, you know, it, we have a lot more leads. So you can resubmit it so it goes back to the top. Okay, but anyways, let's bring on RJ. If you don't know RJ, you can get to know him a little bit more. RJ, how you doing, man? What's going on, brother? I know you uh, risked you, your uh, life today. Uh, you risked your life. Yeah, I did. Show. I did. We uh, we're like 15 degrees with like I think we got six inches of snow yesterday, which snow here in Texas immediately turns to ice. So I had to I had to let you know what I had to drive through to get here this morning. <laughs> well, you're a Viking, so it's all good, right? You're used right, to right. Uh, you you and I are both in mourning this week because of Tom Brady's uh, retiring. Yeah, I'm still a Bucks fan. I'm still a Bucks fan. I was a Bucks fan before, during, and after Tom Brady. I got the hat right here. Brady brought a whole different dynamic, so he was one that you know he's the greatest of all time. But uh, he's gonna be missed. I don't know what they're gonna do. I mean, I'm hearing Aaron Rodgers might join the Bucks. That that'd be crazy. So I I'm officially retiring as a Bucks fan. I I was oh, I was wow. always, I was always a Patriots fan. So this was so more. Brady of, I, was, I was falling Brady. So you know there'll always be a little soft spot in my heart for the Bucks, but. Uh, it was more just for still a good team. Yeah. But RJ, um, for those of you that don't know you, can you tell us a little bit about who you are, what your background is, how you got into real estate? Yeah. So we've been uh, entrepreneurs for a little 11 years now. Um, Cassie and myself, we started a, a business. We, we did consulting for general contractors. We became a general contractor. Uh, we found out about wholesaling in 2014. Uh, we went full time into real estate investing January 1 of 2015. So seven years now, um, which feels crazy. Uh, now I, I go to events and RIAs and stuff like this. And I'm, I'm now officially become a veteran in this business where I still feel like I'm relatively new. Um, yeah. But uh, we've done a little bit over a thousand deals since 2015. We are nationwide. We mainly virtually wholesale. Uh, we do do flips and, and rentals and seller finance as well. We have a, a portfolio, uh, but we've been really laser focused here on the last couple of years on just virtual wholesaling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a couple of years ago, I did the, the 50 deals in 50 states, 50 days challenge. And uh, that kind of built the foundation of what titanium is today. Um, we have a team of about 17 people. Um, you know, we average somewhere in the range of, 60 to 80 deals a month right now. Um, right. And, and that's been a significant increase for us uh, over the past, you know, 12, 18 months. Um, so it's uh, things are going well. And then, you know, of course, uh, you and I got to participate in both of the Closers Olympics. That's where you mm -hmm. and I basically met. And, uh, you know, I was fortunate enough to win this last year. My, my belt's missing. Where's my belt at? <laughs> it's supposed to be back there. Carlos, with the Carlos Reyes stole the belt. He, right, he, right. He, it's, it's not on the live, but uh, but no, that that was a, a fun event to be a part of, and, and yeah. an honor to be able to to win the belt this year. I gotta ask you about that because I remember the first time they had it, you had this such like um, people didn't expect. Like some people teach against it, but like you had this very aggressive. Yeah. approach and then this year you're just a little bit more 
calm, cool, collective. What right. what made you flip the switch? Is this how you typically are on calls? Like, how did that come about? So last year, the reason why I was so aggressive is because you have to understand, I went third in the competition right after you and Antonio. Mm -hmm. So my my game plan going into it was to be aggressive yeah. uh, because of the shot clock, 30 minutes. And so it was like, look, listen, you got 30 minutes, and then you know how it goes. There's going to be 5, 10, 12 minutes of you dialing before you actually get someone on the phone. Yeah, that, um, and, and it, yeah. so when you look, it was like by the time I got someone on the phone, I was already – I only had 18 minutes left, and, yeah, it worked out. Um, I was actually kind of annoyed, though, over 18 months from the 2020 closer winners <laughs> to 2021. Everyone's like, dude, you're so aggressive. You're this and that. And it's like – <laughs> yes, that's true, but that's not really how I actually close deals. Like, if you go watch any of my lives, yeah, um, I do a, a pretty decent job of mirroring. And, and yeah, I, I would say I'm still probably more aggressive than most people. But I feel like 2021, I actually just was more relaxed because I knew what the competition was going to be like. And, uh, you know, I was just able to showcase what I actually do on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, man, that that's that's very – 30 minutes is not a lot of time. And sometimes, especially if the people aren't picking up, you have to kind of be a little bit pushier yeah. when it comes to closing deals, depending on what the point system is. You know, everybody had their own thoughts and right. all that stuff. But, um, yeah, you definitely crushed it last year. It was really impressive to see what you did. Can you talk a little bit more about um, the 50 deals in 50 states in yeah. 50 days? Like that is something that – uh, it, it's really mind blowing to think about like what made you come up with that and how, how did you, how did you come up with the idea, but how did you execute it as well? Yeah. So we were, we were in a weird time at titanium. We had acquisitions managers and, and disposition managers, it's a much smaller team than we have now, but yeah. they weren't really performing. Um, Cassie and I had had a lot of success, um, and, and we, we kind of fell off the rails with getting inundated with flips and rentals. And we weren't lazy. We had no hedgehog concept, right? We were all over the map. It was like, are we going to flip this one? Or are we going to take this one down as a rental? And it was just, we weren't executing anything. And so Aaron Bevins told me about the book Relentless, which is right up behind me on my shelf. Yeah. And I read it and, and it's basically Michael Jordan's trainer, Tim Grover, and he talks about Michael Jordan being a cleaner. And, and when he talks about it, I mean, it literally, when he broke it down, it's like, I am the ultimate cleaner. I mean, that's who I am. And I was like, the problem that we have right now in our company is, is that I don't have the ball in my hands. Like it's yeah. the fourth quarter and I, you know, I'm passing it off to other people and I'm getting their feedback as to why things are working or not working. And so the idea was, is I went to Cassie and I said, listen, I, I have this crazy idea. I'm going to turn the world into my accountability partner. And uh, I'm going to go do 50 deals in 50 states in 50 days. And she's like, RJ, we've never done a deal in the Dakotas, Wyoming, Montana. Like, how are you going to do this? And so I, I had to go to Batch and, and ask for their permission because I'm like, listen, I'm going to use your, your program live for everyone to see are you okay with this? And uh, they were like, yeah, we, we trust you. Let's, let's see how this works out. And so I, I executed it just solo acquisitions. No one helped me um, live on YouTube and Facebook using nothing but batch leads. So I pulled all my data. I skip traced it there. I did all the SMS messaging and uh, I ended up getting 86 deals in 49 States. Wow. And uh, the, the only state I wasn't able to get was Utah um and i still haven't got a deal in utah it's the one state i still haven't why done. is that what makes utah so different or difficult or challenging? I, you know, I, I don't know i i don't know if it's just uh bad luck um i i, I don't know i pulled so much data dude i have like thirty thousand records in utah and i still haven't been able to get one um i i know it's highly competitive there um yeah but, but it's it's I wouldn't say it's more competitive than say like California or, or New Jersey or something like that. Um, I just, it hasn't worked out. And so it is what it is, but uh, the challenge itself was a, was a great experience. Uh, we do plan on doing it again. Um, we, we're probably going to make some changes where it's not just going to be me. 
Um, we're probably going to include the rest of my team because uh, it was a daunting task. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. You go watch me on day one. Big commitment. I, yeah, I look like super refreshed and like happy. <laughs> my day 50, dude, my I'm like, my eyes are all baggy. And I'm like. And that's hey, a few hours, watch. right? Like you were you were on the phone for, it wasn't like a one hour thing. Like you were on it for a while. Yeah, I would go minimum of eight hours a day. Some of them like 12 hours. And then the other thing was, is the time zone difference was also a huge thing. So mm -hmm. like when I had to do Hawaii, I was up to like two o'clock in the morning and then turn it around and I had to do, you know, start at 9 a.m. the next morning. So there were, there were some days that were pretty tough. Plus I got a stupid eye infection in the middle of it. And, and I also got, I mean, you got to think this was 10 weeks. I got an eye infection that then turned into a sinus infection. I didn't even know that was possible. Uh, but yeah, right in the middle of it, I got sick. So it was, uh, it was a, it was a challenge for sure, but it was, it was also a life-changing event. And you said you were only doing batch leads, um, SMS campaigns, right? That's it. So can you kind of talk about, you know, cause a lot of people even starting out, they try to have the perfect CRM marketing campaign script when in reality, you just did this challenge, right? And yep. um, it was only using SMS campaigns, but it's that that challenge alone could really prove to other people just starting out that it just takes some, you know, you got to just talk to people. Too yep. many people spend so much time on perfecting everything when the real secret sauce is how many people can you get on the phone? You well, know? And here's the thing, Stephen. I did it because we needed to fix our business. So remember, the, the motivation mm -hmm. behind this was us fixing. So if you go back and you watch, the at the beginning i had no quick replies mm. i i was typing everything out and i literally developed our systems that we use now on the live so yeah it was great that i got deals and we made money and and you know it, it gained a, a following from it but it was also more importantly for titanium our foundation that we were building on how we were going to pivot and change as a company and uh, it changed everything. I mean, uh, everything that we do now, what we teach at the at our education program was built on that foundation. Uh -huh. um, and so it was it was huge. So now not only was it a, a thing that changed our business, but now it's changed hundreds of other people the way that they do wholesaling and the way that they do their lead generation. So it was it was awesome. Yeah. You know, one thing I, I, I notice and I really like about is like when people say, who's this? You just tell them exactly like what it is. Some people freeze and they're like, oh, how should I tell them I got the number? Who should I? Hey, this is RJ Bates. You know, I, I pulled a list. I called, you know, right. and I feel like people, people, in my opinion, people respect that and appreciate that a lot more, whether they like it or not, rather than you just coming up with some excuses. I, I noticed that's kind of like your style. You're very different. Right uh direct with people even if it's something they don't want to hear is that something um whether you have 30 minutes or not like on the closer olympics is that is that more or less how you you uh you know work with your leads and would you say that's like your style yeah i've i determined early on that it was best for me to do that because that's how i can lead my team i can tell my team listen if they ask you this you're telling them the truth now yeah. we don't ever have to worry about anything along the whole process because we literally told them, hey, we pulled a list of vacant owners. We pulled a list of pre-foreclosures. We see your house is in pre-foreclosure. Do you want to sell? Hmm. Will that make some people upset? Sure. And I, I share quite a bit of that on, on IG Reels and TikTok, but also <laughs> uh, the success that comes along with that. You know, I mean, there's one of where the guy cussed me out because we addressed his deceased wife in the text message. And so it triggered him, but mm. I looked him up and it, he, he had a property that was in pre-foreclosure tax default. So I called him back and, and I kind of had to cuss him out back at the beginning. And then mm. they're like, hey, do you want to listen to why I'm calling you? And he's like, yeah. And so it was like, hey, I'm calling you about your house that's in pre-foreclosure and behind on taxes. And he's like, yeah, man, I haven't made a payment in over a year. I do need to sell. I just didn't like the fact that you reminded me about my wife passing away because that's the reason why I can't afford the house because I lost her income. And yeah. so we ended up getting that contract and wholesaling that deal. And I don't think it would have worked had I not just been upfront with them and raw and transparent. And so, yeah, that's what we, we all do that here at Titanium. It's just about being ourselves and, and not trying to sugarcoat it. Just tell them why we're calling. I love that. 
I love that. Um, I, I just tell people how it is, whether they like it or not, you're at least being up front. And, you know, with all this um, regulation stuff that people are concerned about, I, I personally think the regulation is good because it's really going to weed out people that don't know what they're doing. And right. the people that are doing ethical business and uh, they know what they're talking about, they just got to pivot to what works, you know. So I, I really appreciate uh, when you're just more direct with sellers. But um, as far as like where you are right now, where, what is the next step with you personal wise, business wise or company wise, you know? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're kind of in a, a place right now where we're, we're really hitting our stride. And, and I'm, I'm really happy with the direction that our company is going. Um, mm. I, I want to make sure that we don't make the same mistakes that we made back in 2017, 2018, where we were really hitting our stride. And then we decided, hey, let's go to another level. Let's start flipping. Let's start taking down rental properties. And, and that's where we didn't build out the systems and the processes early on in that. We just started doing it. And so now we're in a place where it's like, are we, we're really good at this. I don't think we're great at this yet. So now mm -hmm. it's about, let's become great. Let's become the best nationwide virtual wholesaler that we can be. Mm -hmm. And uh, ideally our goal is to be the number one nationwide virtual wholesaler. So however you quantitize that, or, you, you know, I don't know if you can, but uh, that's where we want to get. And that's what we're really focused on. And then we've added the education piece. Um, we have a two day boot camp at our, at our office and, that's become a passion project of, of not only myself, but also Cassie and Elijah, our, my partners, um, mm. where, you know, bringing people in here and showing them what we do specifically. Um, if you want to learn how to be a nationwide virtual wholesaler, that's what we want to show you because that's what we're becoming great at. We want to show you what's working for us. And, and we feel like it's working at a very high level um and higher than most people ever dream that they could get at and so that's where we're just really focused on doing that mm. what would you say um because some people still go to in-person appointments and i think after covid some people got forced to even do this virtually some people are doing it before but what what does that look like what does your team look like what do you think are the pros and cons of in-person whether than virtual, obviously you're doing pretty good with the virtual model, but what would you, what advice would you give to people that are still going to appointments themselves? Right. Cause if you're, if you're nationwide, obviously you're not personally uh, going to these appointments, but how do you structure boots on the ground? What does that look like with you and your team? So I think going back to, to one of the questions there was, you know, the people that are currently doing in-person appointments, I think you really need to just, sit down and honestly ask yourself the question, why are you doing that? Yeah. Um, because I, that was the question that I asked when COVID hit. Um, because I always wanted to do this virtually. And that was kind of an internal battle between myself and Cassie. I wanted to do virtual. She wanted to do in person. And, and the reason why is because she wanted to be able to sit down, see the house, get the pictures, um, really analyze the rehab, and then also have that face-to-face -face interaction, right? Uh, and we were really good at that. But I also think that that was a fear of we were not going to be good enough analyzing deals just right there on the fly. And so I had the mindset of when, when COVID hit, hey, we're not going to be able to do this anymore. And we don't know what's going to happen with the world. And, and here we are approaching two years later. We still don't know what's happening with the world, right? Yeah. Um, so we immediately made the pivot. Now, how do we handle uh, pictures and boots on the ground? Uh, first and foremost, you ask the seller, hey, can you send me pictures? Uh, the sellers usually are, are pretty open with that and they don't have a problem. Um, the, the next thing, there's nothing sexy about this, but I mean, we'll hire photographers to go take pictures. Um, if we have trusted buyers in the areas, we just tell them, hey man, you have first dibs to go out and look at the property, but if you decide you don't want to take it down, can you just shoot me some pics so we can get this thing sold? You know, uh, mm -hmm. that's when you've done several deals with a buyer. Most of them have zero issues with that whatsoever. Also, because if they're going to pass on it, more often than not, they're going to show you the specific reasons why they're passing on it through pictures. Um, and so, you know, we just utilize those resources over and over and over again, and, and that's how we kind of do that. So mm -hmm. I think... Again, going back to your original question, though, people really need to sit down and think about why they're doing the in-person appointments, because I think 
majority of the time, it's because they feel like that gives them a better chance of getting the deal. But in all reality, it's probably because you're scared that you're not good enough to do the deal analysis on the fly, which is what we're going to show you here in a couple of minutes. I don't know mm -hmm. anything about any of these leads. I'll be doing no, the deal They're analysis. all over the place. Right. I'll do the deal analysis while I'm on the phone with the seller, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, and that's not something if, if you guys are still kind of transitioning to the whole virtual model, don't beat yourself up it's, if it's not something – you pick up quickly uh, because even myself, I sucked at it when I was like trying to come up with the offer while on the phone. You know, at first I just got all the initial information, told them I'll call them back and I ran the comps, but it's definitely something that's allowed me to grow and scale in my own company, just like yours, uh, because you're able to talk to more people short amount of time. If you guys are still going to appointments, like take into consideration the amount of time it takes to talk to a person on the phone, drive there, walk, whatever pictures, drive back. I mean, it's going to take a few hours. So, but yeah, man, like I said, these leads are all over the United States. You, you can do some live calls today. You ready? I'm ready. Awesome. And um, where where can people learn more about what you do, reach out to you? What's the best way to get a hold of you and learn more about you? Yeah, so I obviously, I put a lot of content out there. So, you know, your your drug of choice is, is fine. <laughs> you know, I got the YouTube channel. I got TikTok. I got, you know, Instagram. So any of those places, just, you know, search RJ base, the third. And then uh, if you want to contact me, you can DM me on, on any of those as well. And then if you're interested in finding out more about our uh, boot camp, just titanium crucible.com. There you go. And then you guys, if you have any questions for RJ, please drop them in the chat. He's going to answer them um, at the end, right at the end. So we're going to save all the questions till the end. And one last question. Are you going to go back to the Closers Olympics round three? Yeah, so they asked me there at the end um, after I won, after I had to wait 45 minutes after I won to finally give my victory speech. Um, yeah, yeah I, listen, they didn't let me judge this year, okay? And I wanted to. I said, listen, I, I, I went I got two verbals. You know, everybody wanted to see what I did. Um, I, I want to judge this year. And they said, no, you're not allowed to judge. And then they let Steve train judge that pissed me off. So then I had to go beat Steve's, uh, his, his partner, Max in the finals there, by the way, yeah. Steven, I just want you to know, you should have been in the finals both years. It, it's all good. I, I look at it as an education, give to the people free feedback. The point system is beyond my control. I know what I'm capable of. You know what you're capable of. The last call, um, you know, the, the one we just had, I mean, I got an accepted offer like on the last few minutes. But I think, uh, you know, overall, win, lose, or draw, it's really the audience that really gets to see the different kinds of styles and be like, man, yeah. I like the way RJ does that. Man, I like the way Steven does that. Let me implement these things in my business. So it doesn't hurt my feelings. People I, say I personally but, um, think, though, you should have been in the finals. And it, had you been in the finals – I'm just gonna be honest with you. I would not have been as relaxed as I was <laughs> during the finals. You were the person that I was afraid of going. Um, so it is what it is. Are you coming back? I don't know yet. I gotta think about it. Like Tom Brady, I gotta, I gotta think about it. I'm not close to making a decision. <laughs> I guess I'll say this: I want it to be a good competition, so I want to make sure that there's there's solid competition in there. Okay, I don't want to go compete against a bunch of other people's like acquisition guys okay i want to go against the 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 top dogs but yes i fully intend on on uh defending the the belt Good. you should wear that uh outfit you got behind you on the next one man I, Viking hat sword and freaking armor yes and the axes yes i and will axes <laughs> <laughs> all right cool man well you got the spreadsheet up yep. um Guys, make sure you drop in any questions um, and we'll answer them. But let's – where what market are we at first? We are in New Jersey. Now, Manny <laughs> was on uh, – not the last one, the one before. He had some rough conversations in New Jersey. Uh, well, I, did, I literally one. just said uh, it's not like Utah's New Jersey. Mm. <laughs> My first call is New Jersey. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, but the last the last episode um Jeff was on, I was making live calls. The last call I got was actually a $77,000 deal in New Jersey. So, um, you know, it just comes down to the numbers, what it looks like. You're I know you're not afraid. 
This uh, looks like a fairly good. decent deal just on first glance. So I actually kind of hope he is. I don't know what the ARV is, but it looks like yeah. it's rented for nine fifty a month, and then he's asking eighty five thousand. So hey, yep. for New Jersey, that's pretty decent. So let's uh, let me give this guy a call, okay. Harry Wagner. All right. I'll pull us up. Let's go. Hi, is Harry there? Okay. Harry, this is RJ Bates calling you about your property on Bryn Mawr in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. I think you have been talking to one of my colleagues about selling that property. Yes, I have. Awesome. Well, let's uh, got a couple questions for you. You're asking uh, eighty-five thousand on that property, correct? Yes. Okay. Um, how long has the uh, the tenant been there? Oh, she is she not paying? Housing. I'm tired of her. She pays her rent is a very low rent. She doesn't pay it on time, and I just she's gotta go. Gotcha. Uh, okay. Fine on her rent. I can do it in court. It's not a problem. Okay. Time, but I can... Let me pull this up real quick and see if we can do eighty-five thousand. What's the condition like on the property? Say that again. It's a beautiful house. Beautiful house. Okay, so it doesn't need any repairs at all? Nothing major. Just, just uh, minor stuff. Like when the tenant moves out, you have to, you know. Typical stuff, paint, carpet, stuff like that? Yeah. Okay. She's very clean. Very good. Uh, it's a beautiful house. It was completely redone with about 15 years ago. I don't understand why, but there was some football player or something. He comes from Trenton, he decided he wants to do something from Trenton. So he redid a whole bunch of houses, about 10 houses, something like that. He ripped out the guts and he started all over again. Something, no, something nobody would do in Trenton. And that's what he did. Uh, at that time, it had new windows, new kitchen, everything was beautiful. I see. Okay. Let's see here. I'm trying to see what the values are in the area. Um, I see a couple that are lower. I'm trying to just make sure that there's nothing. Those obviously must have needed work, right? I'm trying to look at these other properties in the area that sold for lower than what you're asking for to see what the reason was why they sold for less. Well, let me tell you how it, what the neighborhood is, okay? Okay. Okay. So you have to, you know, I tell you, they're starting to redo a lot of houses on the block. There are a lot of there are more on the on the block, and they're redoing them gradually. Okay. Let me see here. Are you negotiable off of the eighty-five, or is that just a, a hard number that you're not willing to budge off of? Bring me an offer. I'll listen. Okay. I'm not too much lower. Well, I'm not trying to be too much lower. It, it's just going to depend on, I mean, you, you you sound like you're an educated landlord. So if you had to throw a dollar amount in what the, the turnover cost would be, the rehab that's going to be needed once that tenant leaves, what's the dollar amount that you would put on that? Oops. Say that again? 2000 2000 Okay, two thousand. So for for that, what you what you're just gonna come in and do touch up paint? No, I need to paint the house. I need to change some carpet, refresh okay. the kitchen. One sink leak that I need, one sink leak that I need to fix, which is fifty dollar repair. And that's about it. I see. And you think once we do that, and the tenant's gone. Do you think we could get closer to like twelve hundred in rent? I might be fourteen. I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I, I, I have to be very honest with you. This is the only house I have in Trent. But I have all my stuff in Camden. Gotcha. The house that I, and uh, that's why I want to get rid of it because I only have one house in Trent. And it's a pain in the neck. 
I see. I'm thinking I'm probably going to need to be closer to the seventy to seventy-five thousand dollar range. I'm bringing over. Well, that that would be the offer. I mean, if if you're wanting to come in that in that range of, you know, I could split the difference there and say seventy-two thousand. I could send over that contract to you right now. Is that your contract now? Seventy-two thousand dollars. Yes, sir. <laughs> uh, 75,000, huh? Yeah. My name and address? Uh, I've got your name, Harry Wagman, but I, what I typically do is, uh, I send it over via DocuSign. Are you familiar with that? I know what it is, yeah. Okay. I never did it, but I know what it is. Oh, uh, it's, it's a way for us to send over a contract for you to electronically sign. So okay. what I can do is, uh, is it possible for you to, uh, can you text me? Oh, what's that? That's contingent or cash? Um, it's cash. It's not contingent upon anything except for a walkthrough. Okay. And also, uh, I would want it vacant as well. I'd want the tenant gone. That's going to take time. I understand. I have plenty of time. I don't have a problem with that. But you said she's a bad tenant, so can we get rid of her together? And, and let, me, let me put it to you this way, okay? She's one of these smart Alex, and she always pays almost enough. Pays it very late. She owes me, she only owes me three thousand dollars, and she's living there for fifteen years, ten years, something like that. Jeez. But you can't. Not the worst person in the world, and she takes care of the property like it was hers. But at nine hundred dollars, nine hundred fifty dollars a month, I'm losing money. Right. That's the only reason I would sell it. My friends tell me I'm crazy. I tell them, hold on to it, rehab it, you know how to do it. Put in another tenant and go on, you'll make money. I, I don't know what to do myself. That's why I'm not flexible. I'm in a no rush to sell. I have very low mortgage and I can keep it. So you want to sell it to me with her in there? Yes. Okay. So. That's the only reason I'm so can we do seventy three thousand if I keep her? No. Seventy five. That's that's the best you can 75 do. Seventy five with the tenant. Seventy five with the tenant. And. I give you title on the house tomorrow. <laughs> well, we're gonna have to open title and run it through escrow and all that. Um, I understand. Yeah. You know. So I understand. Um, is it possible for you to text me over your email address? Because I don't have that. And so then that way I can send you over the agreement. You hold my line so I can't text it. I want to give it to you. H-R-S-H. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, All right, give me a couple minutes. I'll send you over the contract right now. It's before my set of it. I'm not going to do anything for Sunday anyway. Oh, okay. So you want to wait till Sunday to sign it? Yeah. Sunday, okay. Monday, yeah. Okay. I need a few days. I don't do anything. I don't do anything without the gone. Okay. Very good. Well, I'll send it over to you, and then uh, I'll put the date on there for Monday, so then that way you can analyze it and take a look at it, okay? Fair enough. All right. Thank you, Harry. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. You got a deal on the first call? What what happened there? <laughs> you know, I wanted it vacant though. Um, I'm seeing, I'm seeing, an, uh, there's a property one block over that sold for one nineteen. There's one one block over for one forty five. Um, but I'm also seeing a rent rate here. Of twelve hundred, he said possibly fourteen hundred, but just say the twelve hundred. Um, I, I don't think it's two thousand dollars in rehab was near enough, mm. but it does look like there was the work done. I mean, the, just the picture that you were showing, you could clearly see the difference between the other property um, 
And, and this is one of the things about virtual wholesaling for us. What he told me was, is it needs $2,000 worth of work, right? Yeah. So we're, we're going to get it. And what we're going to do is, is we're going to send our buyer over there to look at it. And when our buyer comes back and says, hey, I need it at this price because it needs $15,000 worth of work, we're going to know the specifics then. So if we need to, we'll go back to them and say, well, you said it needed, you know, paint and it needed a little, a sink and then maybe replace some carpet. But you forgot to tell us about, hey, it needed a new HVAC or it needed a new roof, which obviously this one doesn't need a new roof. But yeah. whatever um, we need to go back to them with, we will during the dispositions process. Hopefully, I mean, he said new roof. New windows, new everything. Now, I, I, I don't know if that's accurate or not based off this picture, but because this picture was taken when? In 2022? No, oh, that's 2022. That's an architectural roof, so the roof does look good. The roof looked good. good. I don't know about those windows, though. But yeah. still, regardless, it's a cheap rental for New Jersey. Oh, this one right here. Look at this. Yeah, it's, it's a hell of a lot better than that one. Okay. Nice. Yeah, he was originally asking 78. 85. 85 yeah he went from 78 to 85 to uh, what, 75 and we got him at 75 you're looking at the one i'm looking at the wrong one yeah 85 yep yep so nice we got, him down, we got him down 10k um and hopefully that'll end up just being our spread on it that would that would probably be my ideal situation there is get it for 75 sell it for 85 that that was my thought process there so Perfect. I'll send over that contract later today because he said he's not going to sign it until Sunday. Um, I see someone asked down there, do you recommend sending the contract over when the seller isn't ready to sign over the phone? Um, yeah, we're still going to send it over because what he said, send it over. He, he very adamantly said multiple times on the phone, send me an yeah. offer, send me an offer. So we're going to send that to him. He's going to look at it and then hopefully we'll hear back from him on Sunday or Monday. You know, Nice. Not a bad way to start, man. This This next one. An investor, uh, she wants to move this money over to another investment property. So it could be a potential 1031 or whatever. But um, you ready for the next one? Yeah. In Connecticut? Yeah. I'm just, All right, uh, cool. This is her first rental property. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool. <clears throat> the guy was kind of hard to understand. He was a. Uh... Sometimes he didn't fully say. Hello. Me. Hi, is uh, Keisha there? Nice, who's calling? This is R.J. Bates calling about your property on Luma Street, seeing if you were still looking to sell that. Okay, you have to call back. She's not available at the moment. Okay, what's a good time to call back? Probably on um, um, Monday around this time. Okay, Monday around this time. We'll do. Thank yeah. you so much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Steven, do we leave that somewhere in the notes here? Or? You're muted, bro. Yeah, it's being tracked. I, I was saying I didn't know how to pronounce her first name, but it it's being uh, it's being marked. Yeah, I was really glad that uh, in parentheses there it said Keisha. <laughs> 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 I was about to butcher that first name. I promise you that. So the next one's in North Carolina and Charlotte. Um, they're asking $20,000 properties vacant needs a complete rehab. So let me pull up this picture because this looks like um, one of those uh, perfect opportunities. You could probably get them really low. Bam. Bro, <laughs> whose lead is this? Why is this not locked up? Man. I, I automatically all I heard was Charlotte twenty thousand, and it's like, where do I send the contract? Like, yeah, uh, Mr. I Jones really on Reed Avenue, Charlotte twenty thousand, owned by a husband and wife. Wife is no longer living, and the husband Jones has multiple rental properties. The property's vacant and is not being used at all. He doesn't have any use. This is a perfect, uh, perfect lead. And yeah. the good thing is, like, um. I call these whales like somebody has multiple properties they want to sell, like provide a great experience with the first one. But let's see if they pick up the phone. Cool. <clears throat> hey, uh, I'm going to ask 
for uh, edit access on the spreadsheet so okay. I can copy and paste. All right. Come on, man. Hello, this is Michael Jones. Although I'm not able to answer the call at this moment, if you will leave your name, number, or other contact information, call I will back. be on as soon as feasible. Thank you so much for calling. Have a wonderful day. At the tone, please record your message. When you finish recording, you may hang up or press 1 for more options. Hey, Michael, this is RJ Bates calling you about your property on Reed Avenue. Uh, I was ready to send you over a contract on that property. I know you've been looking to get rid of it. Uh, give me a call back at 817-915-6860. Thank you. Man, that's a, that's a good deal right there. I know. We're, we're going to give him a, just a minute. And you're going to listen to that, and he's going to call me back. So my question is like legitimately, and I appreciate this being submitted and I appreciate people having like the faith in, in myself and myself and Steven on this, but I don't know what the ARV is on this, but that should have already been locked up. I mean, if he's asking 20,000, there's not much room to negotiate, you know? I mean, so, uh, but I just, my gut tells me that should have been a, a deal that was locked up immediately on the phone. And so if you're watching this, whoever's lead that is, Hey, learn what, I, what we're doing right now, where it's getting the, the person under contract while on the phone. Yep. yep. Doesn't answer we're going on to, uh, Jacksonville. I'm calling Jacksonville. I'm giving okay. that guy. Give that guy a chance to call me back. At the tone. Michael Lopez wants to buy that deal. At the tone, please record you. All right, I'm going to call Charlotte now. Call him back, see if he answers. Hi, is Michael there? Yes. Michael, this is RJ calling you about your property on Reed Avenue. Um, I think you've been talking to one of my colleagues about selling that. Uh huh. Are you still looking to get an offer on that property for? Uh, I think you were asking twenty thousand. Is that right? Uh, no, I didn't have an asking price on it. Um, uh, what? What? I guess the long and short is at this point we decided just to just to hold on to it. Um. And we may revisit it. We, we may revisit it soon. Um, I mean, yeah, we had somebody else come up with a number like that. And so until we can make an assessment ourselves, uh, that, that just sounds that sound too low. Because, no, we didn't have a number in mind. Well, I agree. I think that number is too low. 
So yeah. is it possible for me and you to to sit here and have a chat and and see if we can come up with be an acceptable number between the two of us? Well, I mean, we can talk, but it's a family decision, so I would have to take it back to family. I see. Um, who all is going to be a, a decision maker in the process, if you don't mind me asking? The family. Oh, okay. Is it siblings? Is it, I mean, just, I'm just trying to get a general understanding if it's, uh, you know, two people, 10 people, something along those lines. Oh, uh, when we put everybody together, it's going to be about 10 people. I see. Okay. Um, well, what would you suggest would be the best way for me to, to communicate with you guys on, on what, you know, my offer would be and how I can best support you guys and your, your family in this, uh, to sell of this property. Just tell, just, just tell me the, a number that you had in mind. Okay. Um, uh, and the properties it's been vacant for a while and it, it needs a full rehab, right? It does. Okay. Well, let me see here. And the property, the, the the structure itself is 900 square feet, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. I would probably be coming in closer to like the eighty to ninety thousand dollar range. Um, I, I don't know who the person was that, that said 20000 That's just what I saw in my notes is what your asking price was. So I apologize about that because you said that wasn't what y'all were asking at all. Um, but I would probably be closer to eighty to 90000 And that would be cash and there's no realtor commissions or anything like that. Okay. All right. Well, what I'll do is I'll, I'll take it back to the group and uh, give me about – Give me about two weeks to get everybody together and see what they think. Okay. And and should I just follow up with you in a couple of weeks? Yeah. Okay. All righty. Thank you so much. We'll do that. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. That, that is a deal right there. Um, what do you typically do when there's 10 people? What, what does that process look like? What is the next step? So you said ARV is is uh, two hundred. Around two hundred is what I'm saying. I, I saw I saw two seventeen for an eight forty square foot. I saw a two fifty for a thousand square feet. So I I put two twenty five. But regardless, mm -hmm. even if that's the case, I mean it's nine hundred square feet. Um. So it, to answer your question, what do you do? And just what I just did right there. I mean, I, I just asked him, hey, how many people? You, you saw it was kind of a little bit awkward where he's like, he, he almost didn't want to tell me. Uh, but it's like, hey, how many people are involved in this? He says 10 people. I just flat out asked him, what's the best way for me to present this to you guys? And he said, listen, just tell me what your dollar uh, amount's going to be. And and he's gonna go present it, and then it's gonna take him about two weeks to come up with his response. So follow up with him in, in two weeks. So in in that circumstance, you know, I'm just gonna let kind of let them lead me to the way that they want this to be handled. Because you know, when you're talking about ten people, uh, there's not gonna be one. There's never gonna be one answer for how a group of ten people want to be handled for this to be successful. Obviously. Um, he's probably going to be uh, the the leader of that. That's why he's the point of contact. I don't know if he's the administrator, the executor of the estate, or what's going on right there. Because uh, it does say in the notes that there was a, a death. It says wife is no longer living. So I don't know if that means this is a death or what. Um, yeah. Hey, if you're watching, whoever submitted that lead, make sure you're taking notes because this is the kind of stuff you have to do to uh... – just because there's more people involved doesn't mean that it's not a deal or it's too hard or you should give up. You got to talk to the main person of contact because they're going to be your entryway to everybody else. But right. I, that's like definitely a deal. And, and in that circumstance, like, I, and I don't know where the $20,000 number came from, but I mean, we're shooting that low. I mean, I think both Steven and I both agree. 
it's going to be really hard for you to contract. And, and honestly, I don't even think you should try to be contracting something like this for 20000 You know, I mean, unless they come out and say, give me $20,000 and you can have it, your offer yeah. should have been $20,000 here. It should have been uh, where I was, you know, 75, 8,000, whatever. Um, so that'll be an interesting one to see it plays out. Um, whoever, whoever's lead that is, please reach out to me or Steven and, and let us know because this person's going to follow up with me in, in two weeks. We're going to call the person that submitted it after right. the show. Okay, right, cool. Okay, I can help you guys out. All right. So we got a little bit more time. Guys, if you have any questions, please drop them in. RJ is going to do a few more calls. The next one is in um, uh, North Carolina. This is uh, Raleigh, North Carolina. Hola. Hi, is Ola there? No. You've reached 301-5. Oh, man, he's pulling some tricks on you. I hate it when they do that. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when they do that and I fall for it on a live. Um, I didn't think that she would do that, but. I know. That was, uh, that was funny. All right. And then the next one is uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. It's right across the bay from me. St. Petersburg's a hot market, too. I'll let you tell me where we need to be on this one, then. Okay. Cool. That's a radio host you're calling. <laughs> I, was gonna say, I really hope he called me back just so I can have I a I was going to say, touchdown. That's what it sounds like. <laughs> what a boy. Right, let's call Hey, let's call one more, then we'll do some Q&A. You guys have any questions, drop them in the chat. We have about five minutes left. Um, the next one is in uh, – where are we at? Can, can I break the order and cherry pick one? Go ahead. Just make sure you check off the box. <clears throat> Let's see. Ooh. Total total rehab in Louisville, Kentucky. That sounds sexual. Let's do that. <laughs> All right. Let me pull this up. See if they pick up the phone. Anthony. Uh, Caden, I'm using batch leads. Hi, is Anthony there? Speaking. Anthony, this is RJ calling you about your property on Walter Avenue. Are you still looking to sell that property? Yeah, it's seventy-four thousand to buy. Seventy-four thousand. All right. And uh, how much are you thinking that needs them work? About thirty thousand dollars worth of work. Thirty thousand. All right. And uh, if I do the thirty thousand and, and work, what are you anticipating that property to be worth when uh, when I get all said and done with it? A hundred and quarter. So I buy it for seventy four. I put thirty into it, so I'm one hundred and four into it, and I can sell it for one twenty five. Yeah. 
Uh, I need a I need a little bit more meat on the bone there, probably. Um, let me see. Let me see if I can get a little bit higher value here. But you know, withholding costs and uh, you know realtor commissions and stuff like that, that's going to make it pretty tight on me. Okay. I don't. That don't give me a whole lot. Um, are you negotiable on that seventy four thousand, or is that a hard number? That's a pretty hard number. So I figured I could do it myself. Do that. Right. The issue that you run into there is is when you're trying to sell it to an investor, they have to be able to 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 make a little bit of money themselves. You know. No, I wasn't trying to market it. I see. So you got a call from us. Yeah. I gotcha. So what were your what were your plans in the meantime if you weren't trying to market it and sell it? Hey, the next project on the list after I finish the one I'm working on. I gotcha. Well, I think that's uh that's probably gonna be your your best option there. Um, the 74 is a hard number because based off of what I'm seeing. That just doesn't leave enough on there for me, and uh, I'd probably need to be at least, at least in the sixties, probably even the high fifties is probably where I would need to be. I could have sold it last year for sixty-two, so I'm not interested in that. Thanks anyway. All right, have a great day. Bye bye. Beautiful. You got some uh, some good leads today. That hottest one's probably the one in Charlotte, and then you start off actually really good. Um, you send the contract, right? That first call. Uh, I will after we're done. But I got his email, so I'm gonna send that one. So I need to connect right. with whoever um, whoever's lead that is in uh, Trenton, New Jersey. So on that one, real quick, let me explain my thought process. Two things: whenever I'm on the phone with a seller, do you want to sell? What's mm -hmm. your price? On these circumstances, we already knew. Then I want to get them to explain, hey, how'd you come up with that number? He very clearly explained it. It's the next project on the list. I can do it for this much. Basically, what he's saying is, is I still make the same amount of money if I sell it for 74000 or if I do the work and I rehab it, I'll make the same amount of money. So he's not yeah. willing to negotiate and come off of making less money it doesn't matter to him. He's going to go do another project anyway. So he's either saying, I'll either take my 74000 which is what I'm going to include his profit. Because if mm -hmm. you if you go in there and you slap 30000 into that, you sell for one twenty five. I mean, you might make a couple of grand more than what you're going to make. Um, so yep. it's just not a good deal and he's not negotiable. So two and a half minutes spent on that lead and we move on to the next one. That's how we handle it here. Perfect. You, you ready to answer some questions? Yes. All right, cool, guys. Drop in any questions you may have. Let me go all the way to the top here. Um, when you send out your purchase and uh, sale contract to the seller, do you sign first before the seller or second after the seller? I sign first. And why is that? Because it's showing that we're legitimate and that we have a signed, they have a signed agreement, but we do put a date that they have to sign before, so they yeah. can't sit on a signed agreement forever. So we'll put in there, hey, you have like 24, 48 hours, however long that they have to sign. Perfect. Uh, let's see what else we got here. When a prospect wants to sell, then he doesn't pick up or say, I'm busy, call me later on. How long should I follow up on him? Uh, we would much rather lose a deal because we're annoying than lack of follow up. So the exact same way I look at it, too. I mean, if I if I miss out on a deal because he says, dude, you just keep calling me. Oh, okay. Well, I'd much rather have that than I go to my acquisitions guy and say, How come you haven't called on this lead in five days? Yeah. And he says, Oh, well, because he said uh, you know, give him a couple days and he's busy. No, 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 no. Catch him at a different time. So I we call daily. Um, we call, we shoot a text. Um, we're gonna be on him at different times. So if you call at 10 a.m. and he doesn't answer the next day, call at 2 p.m. See if he does answer. There Most people go. have habits and they, they do the same thing day in and day out. Perfect. Um, do either of you guys, JV, in specific markets, some brings up you lock deal? RJ, you're everywhere. Yes. Except Utah, I guess, right? Yeah, except Utah. Yeah, Nilton, uh, Nilton, not Milton. 
Nilton, you're in uh, Naaman's group. I know Nilton. Um, yeah, uh, Nilton, you know that. We JV deals. You know how to connect with me. Send me over a deal. Awesome. Uh, what kind of lists and how much prospects is RJ pulling each month and how many deals does he do with that quantity? So we have three main sources of, of marketing, okay? So we do SMS, we do cold calling, and then we also do PPC, okay? So when you're talking about the list, um, I have a YouTube video that literally shows you the exact same list mm -hmm. I pull over and over and over again, but I pull it on batch leads. It's going to be single family. It's going to be uh, individually owned. It's going to be um, an estimated equity of 50 to 100%. Then we're going to pick the medium value of the property. Um, and then we're going to include vacants, tax defaults, liens, pre-foreclosures, inherited, unknown equity, and expired listings. We stack that all on top of each other, and then it goes through SMS. Then it goes to cold call. And then when we're done with that campaign, we come back and we combine a nationwide list depending on the motivating factor. So we'll do nationwide bankruptcy, nationwide pre-foreclosure, nationwide tax defaults, and we run it through that as well. SMS, then the cold call, and that's what we do over and over and over again inside of batch leads and then batch dialer, and then uh, we're buying the, the PPC leads from speed to lead. Bam. Okay. And using batch dialer, you kind of answer that one. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah, on laptop – um how do you organize your cash buyers list so we have our cash buyers list inside of our crm that we built for ourselves on the quick base uh platform so we have um our cash buyers organized by location and then also their buying criteria so we can just hop in and say okay we got a deal in in st petersburg florida who do we have in there and then we can just we like calling so I don't do the email blast anymore. I feel like that's kind of 2015. Um, now we're very much more about being hands-on and calling them and saying, hey, we got a deal. You said you wanted to buy here. Here's the deal. And we kind of put our buyers on the spot a little bit where it's yeah. like you're either a buyer or you're not. And so we want to find that out pretty quickly. Awesome. A uh, couple more questions. Um, how are you evaluating repair costs to formulate offer? So this is this is one of those things that's that's difficult uh, across the country because the you know prices are increasing, uh, they change, labor ch prices change. Part of it is is that I was a contractor before I was an investor, so mm -hmm. I just have a general idea of looking at a property like the one in uh, in Charlotte. You know that's a nine hundred square foot property. I'm looking at it. I'm assuming that needs somewhere in the range of fifty thousand dollars in repairs. Now, most people would say, you know, 900 square feet, that's a lot of money because, you know, if you just do a generic range, like $20 per square foot, but you can pre pretty much do that on like a rental property, um, you know, that's $18,000. So where's the initial 32,000 coming from? That's going to include any systems that might be going, uh, the HVAC, the, the heater, the roof, um, anything along those lines. And, and the thing about virtual wholesaling is, is you don't have to be specific on your numbers. Mm -hmm. So also, if you do like that Charlotte deal, you see, I, I thought the ARV was 225. He thought it was 200. Based off my calculation, though, if I come in and I offer him 80,000, um, you know, we're significantly lower than where we need to be. Um, there's room in there uh, for us to, to navigate what the repair cost is going to be and stuff like that. And I, I used to get wrapped up back when I was first starting on knowing the exact amount that's going to be for rehab in comparison to just buying in this range that's, you know, if we're at 120 or $145,000 below the ARV on, an, on a 900 square foot property, we're going to do pretty decent for ourselves. That's my thought process. Beautiful. Beautiful. That's, that's really important. Um, and last question, what's the connect for PPC lead again? It's a uh, I speed to lead.com. Yeah. Did you guys, uh, were they the ones hosting the, I saw some with you and Nick. Yeah. I tried to get you on there. Okay. Nobody invited me on there. What are you talking about? Uh, no, no, no. You had COVID. Don't even, you were sick. I invited. Oh, that's what it was. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. That's what it was. Okay. Yes. You did invite. I didn't know what I was getting into. Yeah. So, so like, that's I, what it I, is. I, I, <laughs> I had COVID again the holidays. Yep. 
it's very similar to this, but the difference would be is I call and then you call and then I call. Now, listen, Nick beat me. Beat Why me. parentheses? Yeah, what is this? I hear a lot of I heard a lot of controversy about that. Can you talk so, about that? So I I talked to two people. Okay. I got one contract. He talked to six people and he got zero contracts. Mm. How do they determine the winner? It's what a fan mean? vote. They send out a vote. Now, oh, here was okay. what happened. It's different. He was he was tagging people and texting people in his IG DMs and in his group. And so I was winning. And then all of a sudden out of nowhere, you see Nick on the live, pick up his phone, boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, bam, I fell behind by 11 votes and the vote ended and he won. <laughs> was like, okay, that's cute. <laughs> so he beat me. I, I think, listen, at the end of the day, Stephen and I are both closers. I think at, if some if you're competing against someone in a closing competition and one gets a text and one gets a contract and the other one doesn't, you didn't win if you didn't get the contract. I mean, yeah. you, you're just not a closer. I mean, you didn't close anything. He just had good conversations. So that's interesting. I'm gonna have to look into that. I, I don't know if I'm a big fan of the the fan vote. It, it could it could go both ways. No, no, no. Even it's changing. I already went to, to Liam and I said, no, 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 we're not doing that anymore. I'm okay. I won't show up again if we're doing that. I'm not. <laughs> I said we're gonna have some judges that say here because even Liam was like, dude, you did better than him. So <laughs> it is what it is. So he uh, didn't de he, he didn't dethrone you or what? He didn't dethrone uh, is what you're saying. You didn't no, get he didn't, de he didn't dethrone shit. Uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> I got the belt right over here. Ain't nobody else got it. All right, cool, man. Well, hey, man, I really appreciate you hopping on here. Anything you want to say um, to the audience at all before we hop off? No, man, it was uh, it was fun. Um, you know, I appreciate you having me on. I, I know you've had some killers out here, plus Adrian. And, uh, yeah, that was a shot at Adrian. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, it was, uh, it was a good show. And, uh, you know, for whoever's deal that is in New Jersey, let's make sure we connect because I'm sending yep. that contract off. Same thing with Charlotte. And uh, no, it was a it was an uh, honor to be on here, man. Appreciate it. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. See you guys next time. Take care.